Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Emma Blessing. I'm the Visitor Services Coordinator. I'm going to give Myra a little introduction and then I'll pass it off to her to give us a tour. So just a little bit about Myra. Um, Myra, my, Myra Green um, uses photography and fabric manipulations to explore representations of race. And um, she is currently a uh, professor of photography and a chair at Spelman College. And she's got uh, represented by the featuring gallery in Chicago. We are also excited. Uh, she's going to be in the Atlanta Biennial um, next year. So you can look for her work in person there. And with that, uh, I will pass it off to Myra. Hi. Thank you, Emma. Um, <laughs> appreciate it. Good. So I started my guide app before uh, this whole thing started, because if not, I would have been in a world of hurt. And, um, but I first want to say thank you for coming uh, to my studio, to my last studio visit. I did scroll through, and I'm so happy. I don't know if that's really you, Tommaso, but it's wonderful to see you there. Um, my wonderful friend and gallerist in London, Donnie, Nicole, I appreciate you all coming out. So what I'm going to do today is dye this piece of pink fabric brown. And um, what happens is in a two minute interval, um, I add dye, I move my poles up, um, and then I add more dye. Right now it doesn't look like a lot is happening, and that's okay, because I know where I am in this stage process. And so what I'm going to do basically on my two minute Stint to sort of take you through the process in different stages of my studio. So this is just, um, right now I have a four yard piece of fabric that's folded on top of itself. So it's only two, two yards or what is that, six feet long. So by the time I'm done with this, this pole will be all the way up here. Maybe by the time we're done. And um, I have a lovely dye bath. So this is, um, starts off with two and a half cups of hot water, and I, 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 I add dye mixture to it, um, which we'll get to in a second. And so um, the goal is to turn this pink fabric, which looks really intense. I gotta go get something. <laughs> uh, it looks really intense into, uh, into a brown color. So when the fabric is dry, it's actually a different color. Um, it's not as perhaps as intense as you think that this is. And so there's a lot of color um, correction and manipulation and counterintuitiveness that happens with that. So um, I'm going to wait until this next, I can see my clock. I have 45 seconds. And so this is what I do. Basically every, well, I try to do it every Friday or Saturday. And I kind of know the measurements by right now, which is about a fistful. Um, I learned this method from the lovely Nora, uh, who was a teacher and instructor at Little Street in Chicago, um, where I learned how to do a lot of design processes. So I started this process, it's sort of like tucked in, um, and I, I start by adding, I don't know where that is, there it is, a half a teaspoon of dye. And I do that twice. Then I add one tablespoon. This is what I'm going to do now. I'm actually going to add, I think I'm on two tablespoons. It's like a, it is a science, but it is not a science. It's the way Myra does things, because Myra is not. So I add two teaspoons of body to the die back. I reset my timer. It's quiet, life is easier. Um, and then I start stirring it again. So somewhere around, so that was two and one, and I'll do two and two, which is me just talking myself so I know what I'm doing. So if we, I won't show you the inside of it for a little bit, but I'm just now making sure that this bath is in a video. So just one last thing as I do this is, and I sort of stir for about a minute and then we'll move on. Um, and this bath starts with six gallons of hot water, and then I add six cups of salt. It's very funny because I buy salt by the pallet, 
12 faults at a time. Uh, so they think I'm totally crazy at all these. Uh, or I have a problem. Um, and then, um, and then the salt lets the fabric, it helps change the pH of the water and helps the water, it, or it helps the fabric accept the dye. And then, so this is my salt box, salt. And then I add six tablespoons of soda ash, which is actually the dye activator. So I'm going to take you, I have a few seconds, so we're going to move to page two. Page two is over here. Look at this. My studio is so lovely. Okay. So see here, and then I had to do it. I had to close my door possibly. Sorry. <laughs> right. Okay. So, and then I got to go back to my dye in two seconds. I'm just going to show you two fabrics I dyed maybe in the last month. Um, so this is uh, what were the results I'm trying to go for. So each color, right, goes to a different tone. So uh, this green, it's actually dyed red, um, and I'm dyeing that pink green, and then blue is dyed orange. And so you can sort of see on the front edge of this, sort of the beginning colors of what that is. So that's where we end up when we're done here. This is about to snap at me. I'm just gonna hopefully not hurt myself. Okay, <laughs> and go back. This is what I do all day. So you just have to listen. So if there, are any, well, if there are any questions, you can ask me a question for one minute. No? Okay. You just get to watch me do this process. So now I'm two, uh, I don't even think I'm on camera, but that's okay. Two and two, restart. And then I'm just gonna um, smash this for a second. So the other pile of fabric um, you see on the table are all my raw fabrics, the colors I bought in the last, I this word, the colors I bought in the last uh, six weeks or so that I thought I was going to die before I leave uh, the lovely contemporary. Um, and I just don't know if I'm going to make it. But um, life is busy, life is crazy. So uh, you can see if that happens or not. All right. So there we go. Let's talk about these two piles of fabric. These are the piles of things that I, I thought I was going to die. So these are the ones I'm going to attempt to do by December 31st. Only one just done, which is a sad thing. I think I just saw that before. You know, if you know me, you know me is the one And I think I can do it from here. And you can see my hands. Right. So when I had to figure out what color, I had all these text strips of um, what these dyes die to. So this is sun yellow, and sun yellow will die to this color, right? So what I do is I think about, I'm always trying to dye the brown. I'm always looking at the color wheel, which was my studio. And I think about what is the opposite of one color. So red and green are opposite, right? And then I think about the intensity of the color and so um, and sort of how dark do I want it to go. I know that's going to go off in two seconds, so I'm just going to step back over here and start my process again. Um, my, my former studio assistant, Sean, she was the best, um, always would get cranky. I could see Donnie getting cranky about this because it wouldn't always pull even. Like I don't always pull up the things evenly. It doesn't bother me because I know in the end, I'm going to print these. So this is three of one, meaning my first time I'm putting three tablespoons of dye into the back. And as you watch this, you can see, you can see how intense, restart, the color is getting. And I was worried for a moment, but now I think I'm doing all right. And I'm going to bring you over in a second to show you what this back looks like. Does Myra, we do have a question from while you're doing that um, from someone who says that they're loving the presentation and they're asking about what the soda ash is for and the dye and what sparks your color palette. Um, so the soda ash, I'm going to bring you 
Oh, I'll bring you here, I guess. The soda ash is the dye activator. So people think that didn't work very often. People think that um, the dye, it, it's actually a chemical reaction. It's not just sort of like staining a fabric. It's more of a chemical reaction. And so the soda, I can only say that it activates uh, that chemical reaction. And actually, that it also means that there is a time limit. So all of the dyeing has to happen in 45 minutes to about an hour. So that makes that a little bit more, um, it, it, it sort of limits sort of the idea of what's happening. I just wanted to show you this really quickly because this is what happens next. So this is a turquoise dye brown. Um, and then when this process is over, I end up screen printing on top of it. What's happened in the last year is I started to do multiple color screen prints on top of each other. And I can bring that up close so you can see. But then I got to go put some dye in the thing. But um, so it starts off really light. I am not the camera operator. I do not use the GoPro. But that's what those fabrics look like now. All right, we got to go back to home base. Oh, I have 18 seconds. Let's make this happen. But we can do it. That was not really a third round. Okay, look at it. So, I think the car, I really hate the sound of that evening. There it is. And in two seconds, I will bring you in. So, this is three of two. So, this last time I'll use my tablespoon. I hear you, buddy. I know you want me to be special. It's an intense moment. So this is the moment sort of where I really, this is where concern starts to seep in. Because it's around this turn of adding three tablespoons to the dye, um, to adding the next one, which is a quarter cup, and I don't know where the quarter cup is right now. But I um, start to think, is this going to happen? Will the color turn? Who can say? But I can bring you up close. I can this door pretty well right now. I didn't move for a long time. So you'll see that there is a pretty Ooh, oh yeah. Oh, this is going to be good. I like it when things work out for me. Let me see. Come to my um, data. So you can start to see there is a gradation that's starting to happen. And you can start to see, perhaps, the color is starting to shift and it's like in a mauve. There goes the dye. I'm covered in dye. It's amazing. It's going to a mauve, uh, a mauve tone, opposed to just sort of staying in this bright pink stage. So it's, this, it's, it's in this next piece that I'll really see how brown, if I was really able, and you can really see also when I lift up the color, that the dye is really green, right? And so by working in complementary colors, and I can also show you over here. Again, my camera work is not the best. Um, you can see how rich and how green the dye really is. So adding it slowly and then moving it out slowly helps to create that ombre experience. Let's see. Oh, I didn't start the timer. That's a good one. Happens sometimes. Sometimes you keep talking too much and you go, oh, there we go. I think that was two minutes. It felt intense. Um, here's my coal. And I have my quarter cup. It cooled it out. I looked at it. I held it in my hand. Oh, this right where it should be. Right where it should be. So I move into just a bigger instrument of Side distribution because doing that four times makes it it's really intense. And why not just do it once? So I've added so far maybe three quarters of a cup of dye. And now I'm really going to start to get really intense with the amount of dye I have. So I'm going to do two quarter cup entries and then the rest will be half cup, which is really four tablespoons if you know you're cooking. So there it goes. Sometimes I post on Instagram like why my, my fingers are such gross colors is because I forget to wear gloves. Today I forgot to wear gloves. But I also knew I was going to touch my my tripod and my um 
I know that sometimes you sew and sometimes you spray paint. What, when you're kind of bringing these works together, what is the purpose of the multitudes of colors as you're working with the color wheel? Are you thinking with that in mind as well as you're adding colors to the surface? Well, I, I sort of, you know, it's a large conceptual underpinning um, that is me trying to find new ways of talking about um, race, uh, specifically, you know, being black and being black in America. See, I was watching that clock a little better, so I could do it. Um, this is going to be like the craziest, sexiest fabric in the world. I'm very excited about it. I'll bring you back to the brown in a second. Um, so I, I was really thinking about ways to um, emulate and um, try to think about my own skin color. And instead of sort of diving only into blackness, um, I really just wanted to explore the color brown. And that color brown, um, I don't think it's enough play sort of in the art world. Um, and as it is a difficult color to control, um, I think that it, it because brown has literally about has an undertone of every color. Um, it's not that on the color wheel it is made by by putting together complementary colors. Um, the title of my show in London with Tomato is called Complementary. Um, and so so that sort of started um, me learning how to dye in 2007. 2008. This is not my natural practice, as I am naturally more naturally. I am trained as a photographer, and that's what I do for a lot of my art practice. Um, I'm just gonna look, I don't know if this can be but it's getting crazy. Gorgeous. So, you can see so that's when you're like, it's right now when you're like, okay, it's you. I didn't mess this up so badly. <laughs> um, and then you also say, it's a piece of fabric. I splashed a bunch of green right there. So we'll just cut that out eventually. So, um, so that goes for the dyeing process. The other part of it was the um, printing process, which is I extracted that pattern out of um, uh, what we see in Dutch black uh, materials from African print. It's sort of a strange trans translated um, Strange translated pattern that's a really abstract form. And I kind of like the idea of thinking about working, oops, that's me that one, working abstractly um, throughout the work. So that's how I print them that way. And then I had, I'm not going to push that yet, I have a very dirty thing right here. I'm onto a half a cup, just so you know. I think I'm onto it. Yeah, I'm onto a half a cup. I have to look at it sometimes. Yeah, I'm onto a half a cup. Okay. But I sometimes things are consistent, and I sometimes they don't. I know, buddy. I'm on a decent. Let me start. Okay. So, um, so from there, I mean, I think when you work with fabric, excuse me, I just splattered dye all over myself. Um, when you work with fabric, um, the natural inclination is to sew. And so um, when I first started working with fabric early on, I um, sort of, I had already known how to sew, but I sort of started playing more in that, um, in that field. I don't think I answered your question. I kind of got lost in the middle of the process. <laughs> and with a lot of dye on my own. Next question. <laughs> Emma, did you want to ask something? I'm kind of curious. Uh, I feel like, you know, we're watching the first stages of your 
process, but I'm curious about how um, the Dutch wax comes into it. And then also once you've got the pieces um, kind of, you know, all dyed looking the way you want them to, how the construction, I'm looking at like this red piece on the wall behind you, um, how the how the construction of that comes into play in terms of like shape um, and putting the, the, the different textures together the, the way you want to actually display them. That might be kind of a lot, but whatever, whatever no, you want not, to take out of that, you can. I'm just gonna point at that as I do this. That's not a full view of what that is. Um, so the last piece that I showed you, you know, the open studio was the film frame studio where I sort of focused on that. Um, and that's, I, I'm gonna move this back because that makes no sense. I think it looks better from behind actually. I'll just take it a little bit better. Maybe, maybe not know I moved that thing. Oh, I don't know what I did. You're just gonna have to leave it. Ooh. Sorry, lost it for a second, there you go. You're gonna have to wait for a die to be inserted for me to finish that question. But um, so yeah, that is the, the red piece behind me. Um, is the newest first with this process. I used to just for the last few shows, I just did one color print, and now I'm doing like four or five color print, like the blue piece next to it. So um, so yeah, the pattern on the print is derived from that Dutch wax. So I lift it off the Dutch wax. I scan it digitally map it, put it onto a silk screen and print it. And so it's to have a reference to blackness that is sort of unknown. Um, and then the construction and sort of, you know, in learning all my sewing techniques, sort of really like the, a lot of it is based in triangle, like traditional uh, clothing, traditional American clothing. And so I didn't start my cloth. Um, and so, I sort of use the triangle, which I love. Um, it's sort of an analogy for my family as well, me, my mother, and my sister. I hope my mom's on here somewhere. Hi, mom. Uh, and and sort of use that and abstractly sort of make these triangles and sew them back together. The shapes are not known when I start. I, I, they are truly um, inspired by the color conversations that are happening, um, both in the tones of the fabric and the... Um, how that print looks, looks on it. You know, there's lots of other underpinnings to those conversations. Thinking about um, contextual color, you know, color appears one way um, as you are in a certain grouping, um, which is also how I think about my blackness is that I'm considered a different type of black person contextually, you know, teaching at a historical black college is very different than hanging out on the Upper East Side where I went to high school. Um, and so all of that comes into play when I sort of, there, there are um, embedded stories into the abstraction is the best way I could say that. So what happens next is that I'll finish this and then I have to wash it. And so that's the second stage of this, which takes just as long as the job. Um, it takes about a solid 45 minutes. I wash it so the water runs clear and then I take it home and put it in my washing machine. And I have not yet transferred dye to my own clothing that I know of. Myra, I have a rather dumb question because you were talking about the timer. Do you do you set a timer at home to get up in the morning or anything, or is it just, or do you use a different <laughs> different sound or? Don't use alarm. Don't use an don't alarm because you live no, by no. one here. Wait, you wake up when your body tells you to. That makes me very late for things in the cell. I, I was supposed to be at the gym this morning, and I woke up, and I said, no, 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 that is not right. And we're back um, So I'll just show you very quickly one last time, I guess, uh, where we're at with the fabric. It is a very green tone, um, and it's brownness. It's a little messy of a dye, but I actually think it'll work really well. I don't really know until it is... Um, wash what it will really look like, but I can make a photograph, put it on Instagram. Um, I don't know how to do this with one hand, uh, but put it on Instagram, uh, somewhere where the color's going. So I have a little bit more dye left and a little bit more time. It's really green right now, but I know that a lot of that's gonna wash out. 
So I think it'll push browner than greener. So yeah, rock on. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you again, Myra. We really appreciate you letting us watch you for a little bit. Feels like being a fly on the wall. And again, uh, for everybody, definitely check out Myra uh, in the Atlanta Biennial next year. Appreciate all of you taking your time uh, on a Saturday. It's a gorgeous Saturday here. Um, it's a gorgeous Saturday here, so I hope it's not too snowy in Chicago. I hope it's not too rainy in New York. It's rainy in London, probably. So, um, thank you all. Thank you. you. Thank you, Myra.